what's your name? Uh, Connor Reeves. And you are the brewmaster? I, I am the head brewer here at Oakland Brewing Company. Head yeah. brewer. So, yeah. do you, are you the one that comes up with the flavors or... Break it down because I don't know anything about... Bro, sure. I see these big yeah, tanks yeah. and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Just so, give me a little something. So I've been here about a year. Um, so we've got our four beers, which are Hefeweizen, the Hazy, Lager, Black Lager. Those our owner, Joel, helped develop. Uh, so I kind of view myself as the caretaker of those beers because those are those are great recipes. Those are awesome beers. Those are, you know, the kind of things that have helped build this, this establishment. Um, my playground is mainly in the pilot system, things like the uh, summer ale that's on, uh, the milk stout that's there, um, d the different bullet device flavors that we do, Polk Street, the different hops that we add to that beer, Oak Cliff IPA. Um, so it's kind of a mix and match. We've got a good core brand that we've had since we've opened. Um, that, like I said, I feel like my, you know, my duty is to make sure those those beers stay consistent and stay the same because Hef is, is amazing and I'd put it up against any Hef in the state of Texas. Uh, but then also make sure that our our beer garden and the tap room and some of the seasonal releases are unique and interesting and just something new. So I I get to kind of kind of do a little bit of both, you know, play around a bit and then also make sure what we're currently really pushing is is up to standard so yeah how long have you been in in the brewing business um man uh five or s five years it's probably about right i've been here for a year now like it'll be a year and i think like two or three weeks um and then i was at hop fusion ale works in fort worth for three years before that and at um the former grapevine craft brewery now hoppenstein brewing for a year and a few months. So yeah, that, that five and a half years, somewhere in that ballpark. How does someone become a brewer? Like, did you start off as a, like an apprentice maybe, something like that? Uh, or did you have an interest, like I wanna be a brewer? Yeah, I um, I home brewed with a buddy of mine forever. Um, so, you know, we were, we were big craft beer nerds, um, loved craft beer. Uh, whenever it started making a bigger push here in Texas, it was, you know, whether it was out of state or local, anytime a new beer that was from someone local or independent, we'd go and try it. And then through a, uh, a really cool source, kind of in Fort Worth, Stubby's Texas Homebrewing Inc., we started homebrewing on, on our own. Um, then I started, just as a side job, uh, pouring beer at a tap room in Grapevine for a bit. Before you know it, they needed some help cleaning lines, packaging beer, doing some sales rep stuff. So kind of got more involved there. Um, then there was a sellerman position, which is sort of your entry level, you know, brewing job. Um, took that at Hop Fusion and, and just kind of as that as that road sort of began to get paved, I kept being like, yeah, no, it's something I really wanted to do. And I took some full time positions and began to really love the industry. But, but it all started really with just in a garage in a little five gallon you know kettle with a butane burner uh doing home brew so not unlike joel our owner too same thing a lot of us started started home brewing just loving craft beer and as the as the scene blew up you know started to grow at dfw in texas more jobs became available and it's like i, I want to do that that's fun so yeah it's kind of where it started yeah how, how did the home brews with them first ones how did they come out <laughs> We had a pumpkin beer that was pretty good. Actually, it wasn't too bad because we started right around this time in, in September, October. We had a Belgian strong that was awful, that was terrible. Um, I did a pale ale that was not any good. Um, you know, they were... Uh, did they at least kick a little bit? They were, hey, they had alcohol in them. You know what? They, they did the number. That was my first deal was like, I brewed a beer in college. And the whole goal was like, man, if it's good, We've got a fridge stocked with beer. If it was bad, we're throwing a party and we're just giving it away and we don't have to go spend money on alcohol. And sure as shit, we ended up uh, throwing a party because the pale ale wasn't, wasn't all that great. But again, it had alcohol, so people people drank it. You know, we got rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've worked at a couple other, other yeah. uh, independent breweries. Uh, sure. Not to compare anybody's business or yeah. practice or anything, but... What uh, your experience here compared to, let's say, other places, yeah. is there a difference uh, environment-wise, community-wise? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I do like about uh, Oak Cliff Brewing compared to some of the other places I've been is um, we are interested in, in, in a little broader distribution scale in regards to um, our tap room, as you can see today on our anniversary, does, does plenty of business. but. Um, 
we're really focused on making sure places like Texas Theater off of Jefferson or uh, Boulevardier or other accounts here in the area carry Oak Cliff beer. Like that the Oak Cliff Bishop Arts area and DFW scene has our beer. Whereas I've been at some other establishments that were a little more taproom focused, right? You come to the source, you get the beer here. This is the only place to kind of to kind of get it. There is a bit of a footprint um, outside of the brewery, but mainly we're really focused on you coming and having a great taproom experience. We have a good taproom experience. I just also like that, you know, we want the hazy to go out to, you know, wherever we can here in the Oak Cliff area. Um, same thing with Hefeweizen. We want it up in the Richardson Plano area. We want we want some of these growler shops to carry it. We also want any place in Bishop, whether it's um, uh, what is it, Ten Bells Tavern or you know Eno's Pizza, that they carry our beer and they have them. Um, I also love that the whole Tyler Station community is deeply entrenched with what goes on here at Oak Cliff Brewing Company. I just I just I I love that. Um, I had uh, Wes from Streetish help me can yesterday. So like. That was really fun. They're a vintage shop just down the street, you know, and he was like, hey, if you need help, I'm like, yeah, absolutely, I'll take some help. So he just walked over and, and helped can, you know. Um, Crum and Kettle made a birthday cake for us. They do wedding cakes, they do, you know, um, catering for baked goods. They made a birthday cake for us. That was really cool. I loved it on top of that, you know, we have our own model, but there's also a bunch of people in our little Tyler Station row that we we all love each other. We all, we all are a community. We like you know, lifting one another up and we like supporting each other. That that part's really neat. Whereas some of the other breweries I've been at, it's just been, you know, Grapevine was a great establishment and it it was one of the sole watering holes in Grapevine. That was really cool. Um, but it was its own island, its own entity. Um, Oppensting has done a great job of being a little more community driven and I love that. Um, I had, I just, I wasn't a part of that when it, you know, by the time I left, but I love that Oak Cliff is very much like, hey, this Tyler Station, the Bishop Arts area, Oak Cliff neighborhood, like, we're entrenched here. That's that's really cool. I, I like it a lot. So, yeah. So this is the brew house. Um, so pretty much beer is made with water, grain, yeast, and hops. But um, I usually kind of describe it like tea, right? At some point, um, you've got your tea leaves, and then you've got, got your hot water. You have to let them all steep. So we do that in one vessel here, right? And then eventually you don't want the tea leaves, right, with your tea. You want to separate the leaves from that sugar water. So we do that in that vessel, transfer that sugar water that we call wort over to the boil kettle. Um, at that point, yeah, it's called wort. So we boil that. Um, we'll add hops to it, any other adjuncts we may be um, adding to it. Say like our milk stout, we'll add lactose to it. Boil it for, depending on the type of beer, an indiscriminate amount of time. Um, then we'll move it over to a fermenter. So before then, it's not beer, it's just wort. Right. Uh, so that's all hot side operations. That's usually done like at boiling temperatures. So like 212 degrees is what we're boiling at. We move it over to the fermenters. That's where we're gonna drop it to whatever our fermentation temperature is. It can be anywhere from 50 degrees if it's a lager to 70, 68 degrees if it's an ale. That's when we actually add the yeast, which is the workhorse of a brew house. That's what actually makes wort into beer. So yeast takes all of that that sugar water that we just made. They start consuming those sugars that yeast do, and they convert them into big thing is CO2 and then alcohol, right? So it's going to ferment for depending on the beer, anywhere from seven days to I don't know 12 to 14 days um, at that temperature, at that whether it's a lager 50 degrees, ale 70 degrees, depending on the beer, right? Sit there and ferment, do its thing. Then we're going to drop the temp. And we're going to get it to uh, what we would call conditioning temperature. So then again, depending on the beer, it's going to sit and condition. We're going to move it from a conical fermenter. You see the cones there yeah. over into a bright tank. And that's where we'll package it. Whether we're putting it in a can, put it into a keg, we'll carbonate it there, right? Because um, the yeast will make CO2 as a byproduct. And for the most part, we're able to recapture most of that CO2. But it may need just a little bit of more uh you know, sparkly bubbliness to add right. to it. We'll do that all in the bright. We'll package it all there. This is and again, the final tank. Yeah, this is the final tank. Yeah, so this is your final storage, uh, conditioning, and packaging tank. And so from there, yeah, put in can, put in keg, send it off to wherever, whether it's going in the tap room, whether it's going to Specs or Boulevardier or Second Tap, you know, wherever it's going, uh, do it all there. But yeah, hot side is all done over there. 
cold side and, over here. And you're involved in every step of the way. I do all of it with a little bit of help from Joel, our owner, and Angel, who's our, our delivery driver. He'll help too from time to time. But for the most part, I'm doing all the hot side. And then we call that cellaring. Anytime you're going to the from hot to cold, once you've added yeast and it's in its you know conditioning phase, that's all cellaring. So yeah, and yeah, I, I do all of that here. And I saw those. those what's in those? What's in those barrels over there? Um, the one standing um, horizontally, nothing, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, that are on their side there. Yeah. So most of the time we put our big imperial stout, sombre, in that. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we're, we've also put um, Ruby's Last Shot, which, on, which is on tap right now. That's a Goza, so that's like a slightly sour uh, wheat beer. Mm -hmm. um, we have an old ale in there. We've got a Doppelbach. But mainly that's beer we're just putting in. Um, most of those are bourbon barrels. We've done tequila barrels. We've done a, we have a red wine barrel aged sombre right now. Like I said, most of it's getting our big barrel aged stout. Um, that's like 13%. Does that give the, does that give some sort of flavor to? You get some oak character. You'll also get, well, whatever wood you're using. So like, um, I know some places have used everything from like French oak, you know, in a, in a, in a barrel to, to give it a little different, more distinct character. Uh, but yeah, you'll get some barrel character. You'll get some char from, a, especially if it's a bourbon barrel, right? Because they char the barrels a bit. And then you'll get whatever spirit was in there. So like, normally you'll get some nice vanilla notes from like a bourbon uh, oh. if it's rest on a bourbon barrel for a while. But like, we have a rye barrel aged beer too, so a rye whiskey. So it's got a little bit of a spicy character to it. Not nothing crazy, but just a little peppery note to it. Uh, with still some of the vanilla and oak characters that you get. Uh, we did a red wine barrel, so like. That's got su pulled some of the tannins from the red wine that rested oh, on it. Um, yeah. yeah, you'll get whatever spirit's been in there, especially the longer you, eat it, you leave yeah. it in there. The longer you leave it in the barrel, you'll actually start getting more of the spirit and less of the wood. So, yeah. yeah, I love your passion. Now, you you yeah. know what you're talking about right there, bro. Uh, I love that. You know, I, I like to learn, too. So there's a there's a large community out there that are willing to share uh, share knowledge. So uh, anything I know, I've pretty much picked up from somebody else, too. So that's, that's what I like about the beer industry. That's great, yeah. man. I appreciate yeah. you very much. Yeah, no worries. Anytime. Yeah. 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 Yeah.